I was just disappointed in Renee as a man for saying that because I didn't deserve that. I never this whole perception, dude. If I had as much power, quote unquote power, or stroke in the wrestling industry as I've been accused of or thought of over my wrestling career, I'd have made a couple more million dollars. Seriously. I never had any stroke. I never had any pull. I think that a lot of guys might have been mad that I outworked him in the ring and maybe outworked him outside of it. And outwork him outside of it just means I was always a professional and made sure that somebody had to go first on something. I went, or whatever it was, man. I just made sure I was in the right place at the right time. That is the keys to success in life. There's no such thing as luck. Luck is bullshit. When preparation meets opportunity, that is how you get success. And I was always prepared, waiting for my opportunity. And a lot of guys had a hard time dealing with that. You mentioned Bob Holly, and he was on the list of questions to ask you. Did you get along with Bob Holly, and what are your memories of uh, what happened on Tough Enough? I never had issue with Bob. This was weird, man. When somebody said, oh, Bob Holly buries you in his book. So they sent me this excerpt, and it says, uh, the exact verb was, Simon Dean was a stooge. And uh, they gave him a job in the office because he was a stooge, and nobody was sad to see him go. And I'm saying to myself, really, Bob? You wrote a fucking book, and you took time out of your way to, to bury me? What the fuck? I mean, I, Bob Holly is unjustly by some, but universally one of the more unliked guys. In, let's be honest here, right? So I never had an issue with Bob. I wrestled Bob 50 times. I loved wrestling Bob Holly. I'll tell you why. It's just like Benoit. Every time I wrestled Bob Holly, I felt like I got I got my money's worth that night. We were hitting, we were sweating. Arn Anderson would be our match. I, every time we were, me and Bob would go at it, Arn Anderson would come run into that gorilla position. He'd be, oh, this is gonna be good. And uh, he broke my eardrum one time. I, I gave him a bloody nose. Uh, Bob was a total pro in the ring, a total fucking pro. I mean, he, he was good. His spots were on. I never understood how he, Bob was over, when Bob Holly's, I was in the ring when his music was hit, and he would come out, he would get a pop, dude, people knew shit was going to happen when Bob Holly came out, I remember one time, I was going to do a promo before I matched with Bob, and I said to Lagana, hey, you know, why don't I just say a little bit, and he can give Bob the mic, he can rebut, because he never gets to talk here, Lagana said, no, he sucks at promos, he can't talk, I said, well, maybe he'd want to, dude, let's give him a shot, and Lagana's like, no, don't give him the mic, so naturally I did, but, uh, you know, so Bob, every time I wrestled Bob, it was heads up. I, I was a little bothered by that when I read that in his book, man. I thought I was an overachiever to him, dude. I mean, we wrestled on a house show one time, and I took the match home like five minutes early because <laughs> we had the people right where we needed it, and I would call him. And uh, I get in the back, and Steamboat's like, man, you, you guys went home right at the right time. Perfect. You got the crowd right where we went, and Bob Holly goes, man, that was him. I didn't do that. And uh, the tough enough thing, I didn't get it. Like, to this day, Matt Capitelli, first of all, I'm glad that Matt Capitelli is alive and well. I love Matt Capitelli. I'm almost glad that he didn't go further in the world of WWE because I would have hated to see what it could potentially have turned him into. And everybody gets changed when they go to WWE, dude. I'm a nice guy, but I'm a nice guy that can do some pretty fucking bad things when I have to. It's as simple as that. A lot of us who have done anything in this one way or the other, we do that. I'm not proud of it. It is what it is, man, whether it was on the streets of the Jersey Shore or on the fucking back alleys of Pittsburgh, whatever it is, man. Look, I wasn't the first guy in the fight, but I was, wasn't the last one out of there either. So it's just one of those things. And behind, whatever you have to do, man, you do what you got to do. Matt Capitelli, when that motherfucker walked in the room, it's like some Rick James shit. When you talk about walking in the room and you see the glow on him, there's a glow to Matt Capitelli, dude. There really is, bro. And I didn't know him when all this happened, but he, he's a great guy. When I saw the tough enough thing, I didn't get it. Like, I didn't understand why Matt Capitelli had to be, be beat up like that. I know the cameras are rolling, and hey, we got to keep the business strong. How the fuck is that? I never understood. I've never had a wrestling school, and I never will. I don't have the patience for it. I don't think I'd be able to find students who would be as willing to put in the time and effort that I did. And that would be unacceptable to me. You know, I carry that in all aspects of my life, you know. Uh, long story short, I run a bank right now. We're the number one branch in all the state in Kentucky after three years of me running it. I mean, we were, I run a tight ship and everything I do. I couldn't do a wrestling school for that reason. But uh, as far as the Matt Capitelli thing, man, I mean, he beat him to a bloody pole. My problem with that, I think Al was there for that and Bill DeMott was there for that, if I'm not mistaken. Was Bill there? I believe so. I don't understand how those guys let that go. Like, to this day, I, I never talked to Al about it. I have zero relationship with Al. But uh, I never, to this day, I would love to look at him and say, how the fuck did you let Bob Holly 
beat this kid down who you were thinking was your guy. Like, you love these guys. I know Al loved his trainees. And, uh, you know, there's no love. For, I mean, I, I, like I said, zero. I had no, even though I was Al's boss, I had no real relationship. Hunter hated Al, too. So, uh, you know, I could never bring his name up ever or else I'd be shunned. Why, why did Hunter hate him? I don't know the exact reason. I just remember every single time I would ever say something about OBW or Al Snow, Hunter would literally look at me and say, he's a joke, he's shits, why is he training people? Uh, I don't know, dude, I just took this over a couple months ago, don't ask me. But, uh, I don't know, but the, the Matt Capitelli beatdown thing, man, to this day, I just didn't get it. I never understood what that accomplished. To beat the shit out of somebody, I am, I'm very proud, I did this business for 20 years, I've never taken liberties on anybody. I've never been involved in a shoot on anybody. I've never been in a locker room fight. None of that stuff, dude. I didn't. You know, I mean, 